Hurricanes definitely have a very <clears throat> lasting impact, each of them. And then, you know, Hurricane Emily in 93 was so significant here in the village. And I can remember the Red Cross cheese and peanut butter, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just the little things. The village was underwater for, for Emily, and there was so much damage. And I can remember um, Mama Carrie in Emily lost all of her pictures, all of her old photographs, all of her, um, you know, all, all of these records from uh, Kennekeet Village, you know, that my poppy had, an old family Bible, just all of this stuff that didn't get put upstairs or put upstairs in time, right. you know, so, so the things that stand out to me about Emily in 93 was, you know, it was hot, it was, there was no you know, clean water, there was no electricity, it was just muggy and gross and wet everywhere and we would, we would have either our bo boats or a little John boat that we'd paddle from house to house. Um, but then how heartbroken my mama Carrie was after that storm, that was the most heartbroken I'd ever seen her after a storm and I'd seen her several times with water in her house, you know, so it wasn't that, it was the loss of all of those memories, right. you know, um, and my my aunt and uncle's house next door had gotten tied in that one as well, and in Gloria as well, and a number of other ones. Um, but in recent, well, well, and and then past that, I remember Hurricane Dennis, which I think lasted something like ten days. It kept coming back, and that's the one that cut the road right. north of Buxton and did you know a lot of flooding damage right. in Buxton, I think. Um, that one was a mess, and it was a mess in Rodanthe, too. And then um, Hurricane Isabel in Hatteras was terrible. You know, I can remember them being cut off, and we were gathering supplies up here. Different, different villages and different villagers were gathering supplies, and if you had a boat and you could run supplies down, you would take them down. I know we took a couple generators down and some fuel, and, of course, you had to go through, like, a... Some, I can't remember, some sort of a checkpoint. I think it was Coast Guard to be able to be let into the harbor there. And we loaded up our generator and one other, took some fuel, and made a connection with, I think, Ernie to find, you know, who needs this and lend that stuff out um, down there. And then we learned while we were down there that they... I think the Salvation Army was coming in and they were cooking at the community building. And so we had a bunch of fish in the freezer, so we made up fish cakes and took fish cakes down the next day. I think we made up something like 300 fish cakes and, and patted them and had them ready to cook and put them in containers and coolers and took those down there. And um, Red Cross cooked them up, I think, there at the community building. We didn't stay for the cooking uh -huh. We just dropped them off. Um, so that was Isabel, which was, you know, terrible for folks down that end. And then our worst storm up here since Emily was Hurricane Irene. And Irene was a mess in the village here in Kennekeet. And that was? That was 2011. Okay. Mean, mean Irene. And so what happened here in the village? Well, um, a lot of flooding. I think... It was it was a it was the highest tide in living memory. It was an inch higher than the forty four storm. So houses that had tied in the forty four storm had tied in them an inch higher during Irene in two thousand eleven. Which, if you know, as someone who lived here growing up and has heard the stories. That's significant. Yes. You know, there the third the forty four storm was the storm. Yeah. You know, floated houses over to the beach. It it was floated houses off their foundations. Um, absolutely terrible. Well, Irene was was that new forty four storm. Um, houses didn't float off foundations, but um, the tide was higher the flood tide was higher in Irene. So in addition to um, the power being cut off to the island because of the cut in the highway, um, people's gas 
busted away and floated away from their homes. So, you know, here on Hatteras, you have gas stoves because we used to lose electricity all the time. Luckily, we don't anymore, but every locals always have gas stoves. So they have gas. You tie off your gas tanks to your house, your pilings, whatever, and after the storm, you've got gas to cook. Well, not only did we not have electricity to keep food cold, everyone's gas tanks floated away. And I mean, pretty much everyone. They were all over the roads. The um, fire station got call after call because gas tanks were broken loose and were spewing gas all over Avon. Do you think that the people here in the village anticipated that it was going to be as bad as it was? Um, I don't know if we ever really anticipate that it's going to be as bad as it is. I mean, we, we definitely know what the potential is. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt that anyone who's lived here for any period, any significant period of time, is well aware of what the potential is. Um, however, we are often um, told that the end is coming. <laughs> you know, right. the hurricane is about to wipe Cape Hatteras off the face of the map, right. you know. So um, I think that there's, there's an opposite reaction to the hype that we always get. So maybe we don't panic as much as we would if we didn't always have that hype. But there's, so, so I don't know if we knew it was going to be as bad as it was, but we certainly know what the potential is, and we certainly plan for that potential. I mean, um, the people of the village were in safe places. The reality is that the electricity was cut off to the entire island, and the, their gas tanks floated away, which meant their food wouldn't keep cold, and they couldn't cook. Okay. So, um, and I'll just say that Rodanthe Ways and Salvo had it as bad or worse as Kinnicky. So, so the villages that took that hit in Irene were Kinnicky, were, were all of Avon, you know, okay. and then Rodanthe Waves and Salvo. Um, and so most of Buxton, most of Frisco, most of Hatteras were in good shape. And in response, the people of those villages helped take care of the people of these villages, which is, you know, one of the beautiful things about Hatteras Island.